Hello, this is Austin from the Builder Solutions team here at Trey, and we're back with another service spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about using GPT from OpenAI. We're going to use the completions part of their API. This is a version of what everybody is familiar with when using chat GPT, and we're going to set it up using our universal connectivity. I've got this pegged as a two out of five builders for difficulty. Um, this isn't the first thing that you'll do on Trey, but if you've started using any of our universal connectivity options or you would like to, this is a great intro. And I've got this as a four out of five superheroes. Um, one, because if you unlock universal connectivity within Trey, that is a huge advantage and you'll be a very, very strong builder if you can figure out how to work with APIs um, in this way. And also, so that's high value for new people in that sense, but also um, if you have any business use cases for using GPT, you will definitely be able to unlock using them within your workflows and tray. So let's jump right into it. Um, I've got a net new workflow here that I built or I created already. I'm gonna assume that everybody knows how to do that that's watching this. Check out some other videos if you're interested in getting more basic training. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is add um, our HTTP client to the canvas. I'm going to rename this um, get answer from GPT. Always naming my steps to try and make it clear to anybody else that checks this out what the workflow is actually doing. And we're going to do this in two phases. <clears throat> so the first phase is the fastest way, and the second way is the proper way, in my opinion, in terms of making it something that you can actually scale out and use workflows. So the first way is going to be um, opening up the HTTP client, and we're going to use the curl import. So what I also have here are the documentation, which I'll include in the description for OpenAI's completions endpoint. And I just copy this from their documentation. And I come back, and I paste it into this import section. And this is warning me it's going to overwrite anything else in the properties panel. So it comes, it sets the correct operation. It inserts the URL for me, it adds the necessary headers, and it even gets the body type all filled out for me. So the only thing left for us to do is add our API key. So the next thing we need to do is come set up an authentication. There's an option here to create a custom service so that um, you have the OpenAI logo and everything there. I'm gonna skip that step and use a more um, streamlined version for now. So I'm gonna name my auth with good hygiene. I always use today's date and the service name and who's actually getting the authentication. So it's my token, so I'm gonna put my name there. Then I'm gonna select a generic service. That's the one with the lock and key here, or just the keyhole rather. And I'm gonna hit next step. Now I need to add a token property, and I need to get my token. To do that, I'm in my overview of my, um, my account here within OpenAI, I go to the icon where my name is or where my image is at the top right and hit view API keys. Now I'm going to create a new secret key just for this. And then I'm going to come back to Trey and paste that in. And by hitting create authentication, you're securely storing that um, in a way that is very safe. So instead of having it uh, just manually typed here, you can now use our shortcut for interpolation, which is how you dynamically insert information from other parts of the workflow and configuration variables and stuff. And the shortcut for that is open curly bracket dollar sign. Now we know what we just named that property. It was token. So I just type token, click, add that. And now I've securely inserted my token into the header of this call. Now, what we can do at the end of phase one here, we can just run this to see what that does with the logs. And we'll come to the logs, wait for those to load. And we click on the execution here in the first menu, then we click on the run, and we can see uh, something was sent. And you can see here the uh, token is obscured, which is great. That's because we stored it securely. And then I can come down here and see that this is getting an answer back from the API. This is what we're actually looking for. Crucial next step is to click use output. So we could use this downstream with any other service or any other connector. And now we're gonna move into phase two. I'm gonna show you the more scalable and probably more appropriate way to actually build this out, which adds a little bit of manual work here, but um, this is gonna benefit your building. So we're gonna change this raw to an object and we're going to add the names of the properties for the different 
um, for the different parts of the request body. So we're going to add temperature. I want to make sure I don't put any typos in here. So just copying and pasting these. So I've got model, temperature, max, tokens, and prompt is the last one that's mandatory. There are others, but these are the basics. So now I'm going to copy some of the things that aren't variables or aren't things that I'm going to change based on each call. I'm going to copy the model that we want to use. That's the DaVinci model. I'm going to put a temperature, which needs to be a integer or a number between 0 and 1. I'm going to do 0 0.82. It's arbitrary which numbers we put here. Max tokens. There's a limit. Check their API documentations. I find 820 gives enough tokens to basically always get an interesting answer when you change that to a number. Um, but you can make this larger or smaller depending on your token usage that you want. And then your prompt is going to be what you actually want the model to respond to. So let's put some basic data in here. I have a snippet saved for demos like this. Um, check out snippets option. I won't go into detail on that. And I'm just going to type a prompt. Tell me about Canada. Now, for this, instead of having it in the body or in that like code-like version, we can actually use the connector snake or any other version of grabbing data from another part of the workflow. So either of those options works. Check out a video on mapping data if you want more information about that. And I just click and drag to get the prompt from a different step. So you can now see that you can dynamically map information from any other step in Tray into the prompt where you're talking to GPT. The last thing you could do here is add something like a Slack step and map the output. But first, let's just run to see what this looks like in the logs. And we come and see, OK, perfect. Here's my example prompt coming from a different step. We can see that this was successfully mapped into the inputs of our call to the API. And you can see that text came back. That's perfect. So how would we get this to go somewhere else? We'd add another step. And we could map the message to the text part. So it's body, choices, text is what we need to map to to get that information from GPT to actually send out to another service. So lots of ease of click and drag here. Um, if you have questions, let me know. Let us know. Um, I'll make sure to post the link to signing up for OpenAI and also to the exact spot in the documentation that I used to set this up. Thanks, and let us know what else you want to learn how to do on Trey. Have a great day.